Oh, bitch. Girl. 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 It's not it today, sis. It's not it. Oh, God. My cock dick shaft and balls. Fuck. Ladies and gentlemen, I just got to give you a quick heads up, a little bit of a warning. I am not with it today. I am not feeling it. It has not been a great day. Work was fine, but while I was getting in drag, I got stung by a hornet that made its way into my room, and then I killed the hornet, and then I felt bad about killing the hornet. And I did cry a little bit. And I'm fine now, but it's been a very dramatic day. And whether I like it or not, I'm tucked now, just by virtue of how I sat down. They're in there now. Woo! Anyway, happy days. My name is Daisy Mays, and welcome to a brand new episode in correspondence with the first half of round three of the Drag Detective Presents Drag Duel. That's right, motherfuckers. It is time for I Noon. So as of me filming this, I have just finished watching the premiere of episode five of season one of Drag Duel, which is the first half of the third round. We are following up on Callie Coquette's elimination after the comedy audition main quest last time. Now, obviously there was a lot of feelings and it took me a while to get the video together because there was a lot to talk about last time. Obviously the chat went a little crazy and obviously a lot of you were, um, a little out of fucking pocket and Drag Duel elected to take a one week break so that everybody could collect themselves and get into a better mental state to re-enter the arena. And the first thing I would like to say to that is goddamn Zelda Vox looks fucking good in her Wednesday Adams realness. Holy shit. Starting off strong. That one week rest really did some good work. So Rosa mentioned something right at the beginning of this episode. That chat, I was there as well. That chat after Callie's elimination, fucking exploded. Holy shit. Obviously, everybody had a lot of feelings and a lot of opinions, myself included. I am not immune. You saw the last episode if you've made it here. So, obviously, everybody has opinions. However, having opinions is fine. What is not fine is being a bunch of cunts. So don't do that. Opinions are fine, we've all got opinions, okay? But there's no need to start sending hate to the contestants, or in this case, continue sending hate to the contestants. Don't fucking do that. They're people. Now, while on the subject of opinions, Rosa also said something that kind of stuck with me a little bit. She said that the only opinions that mattered were those of the judges. Now, I understand the sentiment behind this. After all, they are the ones who are ultimately going to be awarding one of these competitors with $2,500 as well as individual prizes throughout the week. Financially and advancement wise, yes, the judges are the only ones with opinions that matter, but uh, I don't know. I don't know because that kind of segues into drag race rhetoric a little bit where like everybody will always fall back on, oh, the only opinion that matters is that of the judges. Not true. There's also the court of public opinion, which as we saw can be pretty goddamn fervent. I'm not saying that you should appease the motherfuckers that are sending hate, obviously not. But I am saying that there are a lot of opinions to be taken into consideration. The judges have the most important opinions when it comes to the prize. The court of public opinion has a pretty important opinion when it comes to reception and moving forward. And uh, I don't think that they necessarily deserve to have that right, to have that say, but they have it. So we need to deal with the world that we're in, not the one that we want, you know? To quote Orpheus, let the world we dream about be the one we live in now. With fewer death threats though, I think. Maybe we can try that, baby steps. Is my nipple just out? It certainly feels like it's out. I don't think it is though. But yeah, the competitors are people. They have feelings. You can't be sending them hate if you want them to continue to perform. Trisha touched on that at the beginning of this episode. She said that, you know, there are people behind this drag, and obviously there are. And you little anonymous ass bitches need to stop being such hateful pieces of shit. Oh, my nipple is just like out, girl. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's not a burlesque number. It's just too small. You know, I didn't believe Celestina when she said that this was too small. I mean, I said, ah, that's fine. I'll just shrink. And um, it hasn't happened yet, but here I am wearing it. So yeah, you anonymous bitches are little pieces of shit. At least I show my face when I give my shit opinions. Case in point, 
and to further build on all of the comments that have been made by all of the competitors and the judges about all of the backlash that they have received, I would like to personally apologize if any of my content in relation to Drag Duel has encouraged any of these activities, any of these, these actions. Do not use my content as an excuse. All, all ten of you that watch this sometimes, if that, do not use my content as an excuse to send hate to anybody, alright? I am not condoning that. I am not supporting that. That is shitty, and this is my titty, sorry. Just don't fucking do it. Be cool. We're a bunch of cross-dressers having a good time trying to win a prize. Like, it's not that deep. You guys don't need to send hate and death threats to people over this sort of shit, okay? It's like, just relax. So yeah, my, it was not my intent to influence any hate, and I hope that I haven't, but if I have, I'm sorry. You should not be taking anything I say that seriously. I am a little fool in a wig, but at least I'm little where it counts. Oh. The wig. So this whole AliExpress gate business, um, I gotta be honest, here, here are my thoughts on it. I hear what everybody is saying. I actually spoke with Bobby about this a, a little more extensively because I wanted some, I wanted his opinion on it. And um, it seems like everybody is generally at the same consensus where uh, they don't necessarily dislike Shinizu's runway, they d or rather they don't necessarily dislike that it was purchased on AliExpress, as were many of the others. Uh, what they dislike is the lack of alteration, the lack of embellishment, the lack of personal styling. It seems like it was just, throw it on the mannequin, throw it on the mannequin, throw it on the mannequin. And I can see that. I personally, if I see a look that I like, I don't really care where it came from, and I liked this look. Um, I haven't seen it before. Uh, that may just, that doesn't really speak to much besides the fact that I don't get out much. But I mean, I enjoyed it, I wasn't mad at it, it didn't seem like anything egregious to me. Uh, with everybody's opinions in mind, I do see where the frustrations were. This dress is really too fucking small. But, you know, as far as the runway goes, it wasn't, it wasn't anything earth shattering for me. I am, I'm, I'm fine to look the other way. I do hope that going forward, she needs to try to, um, just put her own spin on it a little more, you know? Uh, it definitely looks fine by itself. It looks good. Um, uh, I do, I do sort of agree with everyone when they say that they would have liked a little more of her in there. Uh, that is the best part of drag. I mean, hell, this is a shapewear that I stitched parts of the first dress I ever wore in drag to. Uh, and then I hot glued nails to gloves. It's not special, it's not fancy, it's not glamorous, but I enjoyed doing it and it very much speaks to what my drag is. So, that brings us to the side quest. This is the third side quest of season one of Drag Duel and it was a fun one. It was a silly little trivia game all about Lady Gaga's art pop era. Now I'll be honest with you, I don't know fucking shit about Lady Gaga, okay? I know, I'm gonna get my card revoked, whatever. I like her. Um, but I, I feel very little attachment to her whatsoever. I was never really a little monster. Uh, I've always been a big monster, but I've never been one of hers. Uh, I just, you know, she's fine. She's fine. I like her. I like what she does. Uh, I feel like if we hung out, we would be friends. But in relation to art pop, I actually currently have a gig that I have to prepare for where I have to explicitly do uh, my number as Mary Jane Holland. So I am slightly familiar with the Art Pop album. Not very, very familiar, but a little bit. Is my nipple just popping out again? I don't know. So the first thing I noticed during the side quest is that it's very cool that they're all talking to each other. Like they're actually seeing one another on screen. That's so weird. We haven't seen that yet. It's a little shocking. <laughs> and you know what? I also noticed something that is already, I gotta compare it to Drag Race again because that's what we have as a format to, to as a parallel. I find it really fun that when they don't know something about someone, they don't have to pretend that they do. It's been confirmed on Drag Race that many times if the queens don't know who a guest judge is, they are all encouraged to fake it and act as if they do. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Just, not everybody knows everybody. I'm sorry, RuPaul, that you don't fucking know any of the new people and that the new people don't know the old people, but like, bridge the gap. Don't further separate it. So this is a nice, you know, this is a nice actual, they continued the trivia game and it was still fun, even though hardly anybody knew anything about the, about the subject. This is, this video is going to be mostly me adjusting this dress. I love it, but fuck man, fuck man. So yeah, this side quest was like legitimately fun. I had a good time watching it. 
and it didn't feel like at any point it was slow or boring. It felt like everybody was having a good time because when they weren't playing the actual game, they were talking to each other. It was fun. They were having a good time. Do I wish that Callie was here? Yeah. Yeah. But you know, that ship has sailed. She's dead now. I'm not going to join her. When Rosa said, Bobby, just sit this one out. And he just like leaned back. I was like, oh, poor Bobby. Same. There's, there's comes a, a time where you just, you, that's what you got. <laughs> also, I love that the top three in this side quest ended up being Susan, Glastain, and Hydra. Arguably the three most alternative edgy drag performers here, with the exceptions of like uh, Tyler Null and a few others. But like, those are like the three that are known for being kind of more on the monster side of things. Uh, and it's nice, it's, it's, it's interesting that they are the three little monsters that kind of made it to the finale. That's cool. You know I cast my vote for Susan immediately, mostly because she won't let me live down what I said in the first episode. And so that's the side quest. I'm very excited to see who won. I voted for Susan, everybody should. I mean, yes, Glass and Hydra also did great and I can't get over how hot Hydra is. Mm -hmm. And it's fine, I'm fine. I'm not damaged and I don't have a type. But we do learn a little bit about what the main quest is going to be next week. And I'm very excited. We are doing a ball. Keeping on theme, it is the Lady Gaga Art Pop Ball. I like that it actually makes sense. A lot of drag races, mini challenges, and challenges are completely unrelated or very tangentially related. So it's nice that this is just like tit for tat. Here we are. This is what this is, and this is why. So for this Art Pop main quest, the contestants have to create not only a look for the runway that is inspired by the Art Pop album, but also a music video to one of the songs therein. Now, like I said, there are not many songs that I know, but as I am currently rehearsing Mary Jane Holland for a, a little performance, I do think that that's probably the one that I would have tried to get. Uh, I do love that song, and I really, I'm, I'm, I know a lot of people feel some kind of way about the Art Pop album, but as it is one of the only ones I know, and I do kind of really like it. I'm pretty happy that this is the one that was chosen. <laughs> that said, I still know very little about it and I, I wouldn't have a clue as to where to start. Um, they are all in for some hard work, as we can see from some of the confessionals that are sneak peeking the next episode. And I gotta tell you, seeing Susan and Orbit in these states of duress, it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's hurting me a little bit. It's hurting me a little bit. I don't know these bitches but I do care about them, even though I talk such mad shit about them all the time. But it's very evident from these sneak peeks into the next episode that this, this week of hate that they've been receiving, this reception of the first elimination, it's definitely been hard on all of the performers. So I need you all to go and tip these performers in their Venmos, follow them, give them lots of love on their social media. Go do it, okay? They work really hard for free, mostly, unless they win, then they get some stuff, but still, mostly for free, to give you guys some fun entertainment and to expose more people to different types of the art of drag. So please, this is someone's passion project, someone's little baby, and this one is mine. So you should give both of us some attention and some love. So I have to say congrats to all of the competitors and the judges for putting in such wonderful effort and hard work to get this really cool production underway and for coming back after a really hard time. So kick ass to all of you, and I cannot wait for the main quest next week. So I'll be back then. I gotta go pull my dick back out of my ass. Oh, Jesus. Mwah. Testing, one, two, three, four, five, six. Other numbers, go. Happy days, my name is Daisy Mays and welcome back. After a little bit of a mix up where YouTube tried to block the entire episode six of Drag Duel, we, were, we finally got things back on track. We meaning uh, them, I had nothing to do with it. I just sat by and watched and was like, fix it, fix it, I'm bored. Uh, and then they did and now it's great. And boy, did we have one fucking hell of an episode. Dude, no season of Drag Race has ever hooked me in any fraction of a way, as this premiere first six episodes of the first season of Drag Duel has. Holy shit. We got the drama, we got the dynamic characters, we got the talent for talent's sake. We got a really cool format and theme. 
We got consistency. We got twists and turns at every corner. Things are looking good for Dragdoll. I'm very excited to uh, see the rest of the season, yes, but also see the seasons to come. Hopefully, with a very familiar cotton candy scented face on there. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I showed up to work today and they sent me home because it was too slow. So I've got a lot of pent up espresso based energy that just doesn't have anywhere to go. Boy, did this episode get wild. We have our second elimination episode of the series and holy shit, holy shit. So to kick off the second half of the third round, episode six of season one of Drag Duel, we have Bootsy and Zelda giving us their art pop inspired Lady Gaga looks and fuck are they good. So yeah, YouTube almost blocked this video before we even got to see it, but last minute they got it sorted out YouTube, get your shit together, please. That's my note for YouTube. It's probably gonna be a few each episode at this point because it just keeps screwing me over. All right, so this is very obviously the biggest episode and the biggest main quest we have had so far. Like I said, I'm not a, a huge Lady Gaga stan or anything. I'm not a little monster. I'm a big monster, but for other reasons. And it's not my penis, okay? It's not that. It's just my attitude and my ego and my chaos, chaos. Chaos. Discord. I am the heiress goddess of Discord of drag. So yeah, not really a stand, but fuck, this episode is really hype. Like everybody's doing a great job in this opening introductory part of getting me excited for everything that's going to go down. And rightfully so. They did, they did not disappoint. They certainly delivered. So as we saw in the first half of the episode this week, the performers had to use the Art Pop Lady Gaga album, pick a song, create a music video to that song. So it's not only performance, it's also editing, and then create their runway based on that same art pop situation. There were some misses, there were some hits. Nobody did truly bad, but you know, everybody everybody gave it their all and it really, it really showed. So congratulations to everybody, all the contestants and judges. You guys really kicked ass with this one. This was a fucking wallop of an episode. It had everything. So for the side quest of those top three little monsters from that side quest, we finally do have a winner. And our winner is by a very slim margin, Susan. The inflection, it's gotta, you gotta do it. And it's required, it's required reading, required summer reading. Congratulations, Susan. She won a hundred dollar bonus for winning this side quest. That's so cool. This is such a really cool way. It's an indirect way of tipping the performers too. It's really cool. I love that they are having these incremental prizes that we've touched on before in order to make this feel like the stakes are rising. You'll also notice that that side quest prize has gone up a little bit. So, you know, we might be seeing more of that. So Trisha says that she is starting with her song, Aura. I think if I'm not mistaken, this is the order of the album that they're going in. That's super fucking cool. That's hype as shit. I'm very excited for that. I love the format. I really gotta give props to the crew and the judges and the production team of Drag Duel for really thinking of everything and keeping it fresh. That's where uh, Drag Race typically tends to fail. So I'm glad you all took notes from their shortcomings. And I will continue to shit on Drag Race because it's my favorite pastime. So Trisha and Christy actually had to move their apartments while they were filming, which is a terrifying concept and one that I can very closely relate to. And not only can I relate to it, I can prove to you that I've done almost exactly that. In fact, I'm gonna put a link in my description here to the video where I moved from Wyoming to New Jersey in approximately 10 days from full apartment to in the car driving. And uh, it was a terrifying undertaking, but it was a lot of fun. It's like a two hour video if you want something just in the background. Um, I just thought I would shamelessly plug that real quick because for once I have relevant experience. <laughs> Never fucking happens. When I saw that Shanita Woman was doing Mary Jane Holland, I am currently, for those who don't know, working on doing Mary Jane Holland as a number right now. Uh, for this upcoming Friday, actually, by the time this video is posted, most likely, I will have already performed it. Maybe sooner, not sure, we'll find out. But I just find it so cool to see that parallel going on right now. So I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Shanita. I'm with you, I'm wishing you the best. And that's probably the last positive thing I'm gonna say about your performance, so sorry. But we'll get there. So let's get right into the main quest, which was the Art Pop Ball music video challenge. Holy fuck. There were a lot of moving goddamn parts in this, this particular undertaking. 
and we're just gonna go right down the line because there's 11 performers to get through and they all had so much to offer. This is easily my favorite episode of Drag Duel thus far. It's wild. So up first was Trisha Can with Aura. First thing right off the bat, broad daylight, what? Only Trisha can pull this off. <laughs> I'm not saying they're all good, but you clicked this video. You can't leave now. That's the rules. That's the rules. You're stuck here now. Welcome. Hi. Pull up a chair. You'll be here a while. The only real thing that I noticed was at the beginning of this video, uh, the shadow of the of the person filming uh, was a little teeny bit, teensy bit distracting, uh, but that's nitpicking. That's nitpicking stuff. Overall, the video was very, very good. This is a wonderful breath of fresh air for Trisha. We're finally seeing her be the performer that we all know that she can be. Like, this is her in her element. We are finally seeing her embrace the things that she is good at, and I like what I see. So Trisha, keep it the fuck up. I'm so glad that your duel to the death did not bear no fruit. This is fantastic. Well done, bitch. Also, this look is, 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 oh my God, it's so good. <laughs> I want this fucking look. Trisha has an uncanny ability to wear almost exclusively leotards and still make me love each and every one of them. And uh, now admittedly, I am, I am a leotard girl. I love leotards. I don't care what anybody fucking says. Leotards are great. And Trisha delivers on some really fucking spectacular leotards. The sound effects are killing it. I loved that little section where she was like de-dragging that so cool, the editing was well done. I mean, this is a note that I'm going to say for a lot of the performances. This looked like a music video. It looked like it was filmed to be like someone's indie project music video. Like I have a lot of friends who have written songs that would go well with this video. And I, I love it. None of them are in the Chicago area, but if I find any, then Trisha, I'll send them your way. Next up, we got Rose of Gold with Venus. Now I love this song and I did not know that I knew this song. I, I, I guess I didn't realize that it was on the art pop album, but I'm like, I'm, I'm vibing, okay? I'm so glad to hear this song. Now, as for Rosa's music video, that sounds like I'm gonna say something mean. It's not, it's not bad, it's not bad. I'm actually really on board. So, I dabble in the Hellenistic pagan ways myself. Uh, I say Hellenistic uh, because Hellenic is different from Hellenistic. Hellenic is specifically Greek. Hellenistic is Greek with Egyptian and some Celtic and some other sort of influences thrown in there. Uh, I dabble, I research. It's a little hyperfixation of mine. I love it very much. And um, I gotta say, when I saw that she was using the muses as a concept, I was very excited. That's a very, very clever, especially given the aesthetics and the theme of the art pop album, really digging into mythology there with Venus, GUI, and with a couple others, I think, I can't remember. Um, that's a very, very smart play on Rosa's part. I love that. Now, as for the muses, the muses in particular are some deities that I personally have worked with. Um, I don't know if they like me, but uh, they seem to like me picking up singles from people in the club because I haven't been banned yet, so. Thanks, muses, mwah. The one thing I am going to take umbrage with here is that Rosa performed as five of the muses. There are nine total, um, and that's fine. I understand that, you know, it's, it's just, you know, there's nine muses, it's hard to get nine full costumes and wigs and looks together and film all of them in separate so they stay cohesive. I, I get it, the five-man band was probably your best bet. Um, what I do take umbrage with is which of the nine muses you chose for this. Let me explain. I'm gonna go into my little detailed diatribe here, overly sarcastic production style. Hear that red and blue? I'm here for you. Now, the ones that Rosa included are Talia, Cleo, Calliope, Melpomene, and Terpsichore. Um, don't know if I'm correct on those pronunciations, it's just the ones I've used the most. Talia is the, is, is the muse of comedy. Cleo is the muse of history. Calliope is the muse of epic poetry. Melpomene is the muse of tragedy, and Terpsichore is the muse of dance. I found these selections confusing because for comparison, the ones that she left out were Euterpe, or Euterpe, Euterpe, however you say that, the muse of music, Erato, the muse of love poetry, Polyhymnia, the muse of sacred hymns and sacred poetry, and Urania, the muse of astronomy. I understand why those last two didn't make the cut, but I really feel like love poetry and music should have been in this music video about love. Uh, that's gonna be nitpicking a little bit. It was still a good video. I just wanted to point that out because you're, you're touching on one of my hyperfixations here, my love, and you know I gotta throw that out there. 
It's it's so rare that it comes up unless I'm talking to somebody about Percy Jackson. So I just had to throw it in there somewhere. <laughs> Sorry, had to do it. That said, um, the, the plot, if there was one of this music video, was pretty lacking. And the only reason I say that is because she was clearly going for a plot. And I don't know what that plot was. There were very clear beats. I just didn't know what those beats were, like what was happening in them. Uh, one of them was crying at some point. It might've been Cleo, I'm not sure. I think Venus ended up showing up, like Aphrodite Venus started showing up at the end. Um, didn't know why. I, it was just a little all over the place. It was a little unclear, but ultimately I wasn't mad at it. I still enjoyed the song and I enjoyed that she took uh, an original take on it. Rose is very good at um, swinging big and uh, more often than not, she does hit. Uh, this one was a little bit of a, of a, of a hit, but like it was a glancing hit for me, that's all. She did find a lot of opportunities for comedy in a song that really doesn't have that many, so well done, Rosa. And also there was a little cameo from a snail. Hi, snail. I like that snail. Keep that snail. Next up we have Orbit with G-U-Y. I assume that's how you say that. It's certainly how it seems like you say that. Obviously Orbit looks fantastic in her standard makeup here, but I was so pleasantly surprised to see that she also did some small classic traditional makeup as well. Um, traditional drag makeup at least, and not even traditional, just a, a, a very different style than what we see with her. And I was so glad that she didn't give up her signature style while simultaneously showing us something new. That's so cool. And this was a very clever way to use that. This challenge was an excellent way to showcase that. Her video was simple, it was clean, it was effective. And I, it looks like it was all filmed in one location, like one room. Well done, not a lot of people did that. I think Tyler Noll was one of the other standouts in that category, so well done, Orbit. I will say it did get a teensy bit repetitive just cycling between like the four or five different angles and that was kind of it. It was just like those static angles. That's fine, but you know, it, eventually, especially like at the bridge and for the final choruses, you really want to like, you really want to catch us off guard so that we stay invested. Also, everything being in the same room, and with the lighting, this kind of made me think of like a little sneak peek of like Bo Burnham's Inside. Like Orbit's version of Bo Burnham's Inside. Love that. Is that her actual hair when she's got the small makeup going on? That's so cool. I know we've seen Orbit's natural hair like out of drag, but this is very, it's very cool to see her use it in drag as well. I wasn't sure if it was a really good lace front or her hair for a second there. Well done. I'm sure the lighting helped a bit, but I don't want to sell you short. I gotta say, as somebody who has not heard much of the Art Pop album before, what a fantastic introduction to it. You guys really did an excellent job of introducing me to some material that I've been like tangentially associated with but never really explored myself. And now I want to explore it more, so thanks. Well done. I, I'm starting to really like Art Pop, you know? Makes me think of Xanadu. Except I'm enjoying it. Next up is Tyler Knoll. Holy shit, Tyler Knoll. This video was my favorite of the entire week's performances. Holy shit. Applause for Tyler Null. Tyler Null, you are one of those performers that just aces it in every single performance. Like this is a performer. Now we just gotta get those looks on par because Tyler has had some very good looks, but Tyler seems to have really good looks when he's not trying to have good looks. Like this music video, shock full of fantastic looks for Tyler. And then we get to the runway. We'll talk about that later. So I think I mentioned Tyler Noel's song was Sex Dreams. <laughs> Within seconds of the video starting, I was hooked. This video was so visually stunning. I can't begin to put into words how much I loved Tyler Noel's video, how much he kept me engaged the entire time. And I watched it back a few times because there were little details like the banana fucking wrapped up in the leather straps. Oh my God. And then it was like in a, it was like in a, uh, like a, like a sock or something later. Like it was fantastic. Everything, so much love and care went into this video. I'm just, I'm flabbergasted. Tyler, I will sleep on you no longer. Derek mentioned something that I, I'm going to wholly support. Tyler Knoll, the concept of gender does not exist for him. And I love that. You never know, you're gonna get one, you're gonna get the other, you're gonna get both, doesn't matter. We got something different in the talent show than we got in the, in the audition tape. And we got something different in the Meet the Cast than we did in this music video. We get something different in the side quests. It's always so... Tyler is a very flexible performer and I can't wait to see that translate into the way that he presents himself on a runway because he presents himself well in terms of costumes and makeup and hair and everything 
in like challenges where it's not the focal point, but as soon as it becomes the focal point, it feels like he clams up. He thinks about it too much or not enough or it's just, there's a disconnect there and I don't know why. Tyler Knoll's video made me think of Ninja Sex Party. Danny Sex Bang, Ninja Brian, the whole shebang. Which is a perfect segue into Bobby Uranus. If you don't know, Bobby Uranus is very Ninja Sex Party core. Love him. His looks, especially in this music video, are very Danny Sex Bang. Dan Avedon from Game Grumps. Love it so fucking much. And Bobby has the song Manicure. This is another song I have never heard. I had no idea. I don't think I've even heard it in passing. So this was my first introduction to it and a very, very solid, exciting introduction at that. Bobby's was one of the few videos where we got like an entire story, beginning, middle, and objective obstacle, and everything was clearly executed. This is how I know that Bobby is also a theater kid like me, because we think in terms of storytelling. We think in terms of point A to point B, character arcs, etc. I also love that the story that Bobby seems to be presenting is what appears to be Bobby's origin story. I love this. I don't know if this is like based on a true story or anything, but it's certainly exciting and I would love to believe that it is. I mean, I wouldn't love to believe that it is because it was kind of a sad story, but I mean, art imitates life, etc., etc. The one thing I can't get over, and this is another positive, I can't get over how Bobby managed to do the Bobby looking at Petrina, Petrino looking at Bobby. The only reason I use their out of drag name is because uh, it's on his TikTok. It's, it's Petrina slash Bobby. So I'm, you know, it's already out there. But the way that he did that, I, I, I'm, I'm lost. I'm lost. I'm not a tech, technically savvy person. I don't get technology very often. I'm an old bag. Um, and this just blew my fucking mind. I was like, is this Spy Kids 3D? Holy shit. That's my reference of advanced computer graphics. If that's uh, giving you any hints there. So yeah, excellent work, Bobby. A very strong week for you. I'm very proud. Next up, we have Glass Stain with the titular song, Art Pop of the Art Pop album. Now, Glass Stain mentioned in the confessionals that she wanted this song and she wanted to take it in a different direction. And I think she succeeded. The judges were getting a little, a little specific about some parts and, and I don't think I necessarily agreed with those. I mean, right away, the look is fantastic. The mug is right. The hair is awesome. It's everything that needs to be distinct is distinct. When I first saw her in this all white, I immediately thought white diamond. White diamond Steven Universe reveal. Stunning and so shocking. I didn't really have a problem with those little special effects that Glass had in there. I know the judges did. I kind of liked them. I thought it was a fun way to break up the fact that it was just her sitting in a chair the whole time. Um, I also didn't have a problem with her sitting in a chair the whole time. And then when she had the people come in and paint her, uh, I loved it. I do think it could have been a little more. I don't think they needed to dump buckets of paint on her. I disagree with the judges on that too. What I think they should have done is had bigger paint brushes and I think the painters should have been going in a bit more. Like not beating her, Robbie. That looks like it's like, no, just like bigger, intentional, almost choreographed strokes, you know? Like I wish it had been more of that. Uh, but otherwise I am not mad at it. I didn't have nearly as many problems as the rest of them seem to have with it. Um, I certainly did not think that this performance was bottom worthy, but we'll get there. Whew, these are some productions that we got going on here. Like I'm once again reminded of how great the production quality was for Cali Coquette. And I will get to that as well. We'll comment on that in a moment. Uh, I, I do kind of wish we got to see her in at least this challenge. I would have liked to see it. But anyway, next up we got Hydra with the song Swine. Another song that I've never heard, another song that's going right into my Spotify playlist, the instant I get home and get out of drag. Right away, the quality of Hydra's video is so crisp and clear and just pretty. Like she spared no expense. This is a nice camera and this is an excellent setup. And I don't mean like, oh, she, she threw money at the problem. No, I mean, she curated this in such a beautiful way. Well done, Hydra. I may be a little biased because I'm still absolutely fucking simping. Just to wrench down here. You can't see, and I'm not gonna show again because that would be inappropriate. I'm a professional, thank you. This is another one of the videos that right off the bat, I was like, this looks like a music video. It, if I didn't know better, I would think that this was the released music video. 
Now, granted, I haven't seen what Lady Gaga's music videos usually look like, so for all I know, that might be a grievous insult. Hopefully it's taken as the compliment I mean it as. Now, th this bloody red look that she has towards the end, is this a Carrie reference? What with the swine, pig's blood? That's what I was immediately getting from it. I would have loved if there was a bucket dumping the blood on her, but like, you know, obviously we don't all have that kind of a, you know, she, she put the budget into the quality and into the setup. I'm not gonna fault her for this. Voguing, stellar editing, beautiful makeup. Hydra is, she is, she is a front runner for this challenge, to be certain, in my opinion. This was an excellent video. And we are keeping that art pop ball rolling with Christy DeVinke doing fashion. Now, she mentioned in the confessionals that she was like, I know it's the obvious pick. And so I was kind of like, oh, she's gonna do her cute little fashion thing. And bitch, she certainly fucking did. And she shut me right the fuck up. She shut me right the fuck up. This was incredible. Her win, as we find out later, her win was completely justified. This and Tyler Knowles' videos were the only ones where I thought, this is that person's song. That's their number. You don't do that number around her because that's her number. That is her theme, her signature song. Like this is, that's what I thought when I was watching this video. That Violet Tchotchke corset cinched to the absolute fucking spine. Christy understood that to do a song called Fashion, you had to make sure that your fashion was top of the line, top tier, unclockable. And they were just that. I don't know if it was a trick of the editing or a trick of the light, but every look that she came out in with that gorgeous human hair unit, every look she came out in was fucking incredible. And it just topped the one before. So when we got to flash back to the ones before, I was like, oh, this one again, I'm so excited. Like I was fighting. I think she made a very smart choice by keeping the editing to a minimum because you know, she didn't really need it. The lighting and the costumes and the attitude really spoke volumes. And I mean, she has officially killed milk. Like this is a dairy free zone. She may not touch the fashion. It will not change her life because Christy DeVinci is touching the fashion and she is changing all of our lives. Touch the fashion, change our life. Velcro, 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 Velcro. Touch the fashion, change our life. Velcro, Velcro, Velcro. Next up, we have She Needs a Woman doing my personal favorite, Mary Jane Holland. Now, I say my personal favorite because I'm currently learning the song for a number and I did the same research that she did and I discovered the same things about it that she did. That is where my description of it being my favorite does end, unfortunately. So the judges commented on the cutting of the blonde wig taking too long, I agree, but that's not what I was focused on. I was focused on the fact that the camera was staying in one place at a time for too long. And in at least one of those places, the neon background, for a while, nobody was there. Nobody was lip syncing. I understand artfully depicting a background as being intentionally devoid of life or vacant, but that didn't, we didn't get that there. It just seemed like somebody missed a cue, like somebody was supposed to be in that shot and just wasn't. That said, when Shinita was lip syncing, it was intense, it was awesome, but I couldn't focus on that because it felt like somebody making a TikTok or something. The transition to the short hair though, I loved that. And then I loved when she started buzzing the hair. Turn the fuck up. That is that performance art shit that we love. This is that Tyler Knoll stapling shit, glass stain shoving needles through her nose kind of tea that I have come to expect from these daredevils and I am excited about it. But I do agree with the judges. I wish she had stayed bald. Sure, neon green bald would have been great, but just bald is also fine. I, I, I get why she chose that wig. Um, definitely makes sense. It was gorgeous in that background. It matched the lips perfectly. It was stellar. Looked fantastic. But I just think that we kind of lost something by gaining more hair. I understand that the song is about Lady Gaga going brunette and using that brunette as a sense of freedom, but this wasn't brunette. And it seemed like the narrative that Shinizu was going for was just taking the hair away to make that masculine look that she talked about in the confessionals. And that's great. I wish she had committed to that. But then at the last minute, it seemed like she left turned back into the original source material. And I just, I don't know. If you're doing your own idea, I feel like you should commit to that. And I sort of lost that a little from her. Also, another minor thing is that towards the end, I didn't notice it during the beginning of the video, but towards the end, it seemed like the, the sync of the lip sync was off. The music was just a little off from, it seemed like Shanidza knew the words and was getting them right. I think it was just an audio misalignment issue. Next up, we got Titanic Donovan doing dope. Now, Titanic was top two for the talent show 
second episode and it was fucking incredible. So I was expecting a big game and I was not disappointed. But I will say, I, I, I was impressed by the things I don't think I was supposed to be impressed by, and I was unimpressed by the things I think she was shooting for. Here's what I mean. Um, what was the purpose of the orange? Because she had the orange when they were talking about a corpse in the song. Like, it was like, it was like Lady Gaga mourning someone. I don't understand the nuances of the song, so maybe this was supposed to be a joke. It certainly came across as a joke, because she's mourning someone, and then... Titanic is like penetrating this orange, like fucking call me by your name, peach tea. So I just don't know what that was. Was she, was she like, was she fingering the corpse? Like what, what was that? And then it got crazier and then it got crazier. And then just when I thought it couldn't get crazier, it got crazier. First of all, a technical note, the transition to the, from the black and white to the color uh, was a little bit abrupt and didn't seem to line up with anything. I think that's an excellent idea to have it go from black and white to color, um, especially because that color palette of the blacks and whites with the oranges and like the few very specific splashes of color. This is how I know from the talent show we knew it, but now I have confirmation that Titanic is a fucking artiste. And it's from this selection of color palettes to include in this video. It's so expertly selected, but I do wish that the editing had reflected that intent because that shift to the color was a little abrupt, abrupt, abrupt. And it didn't seem to really support any specific part of the song. I feel like it could have just been moved to a different part where it would have made a lot more sense. Now, as the video went on with her being like, basically fucking abused by this invisible other person, ripping the wig off, slapping her across the face, why, ripping the makeup off. Like, I, I don't know if I was supposed to be laughing, but I was laughing. I was laughing a lot. So yeah, it was just, it was really good. I just didn't really know what was going on. <laughs> Speaking of not knowing what's going on, let's talk about Susan with Applause. Now Applause is the last song on the Art Pop album. My fucking gloves are gonna make it so hard to change this page. And that means Susan was closing out this performance. She had a big task ahead of her. And unfortunately, as we saw, she didn't really deliver, and the judges agreed. I did love the Susan voiceover right at the top of it. That was hilarious. She's in drag at the gym. Love that. Love that we got to see Susan in full drag get body slammed. Um, and you know she had a blast doing that. She must have. Her back probably didn't. She's chronically ill. But she did that for us. She was running through the streets in full drag in broad daylight. But I did kind of echo the sentiments of the judges. I didn't know what the message was. I didn't, if there was a storyline, I didn't know what it was. If the intent was that she's tired of the unsolicited attention from guys, that wasn't coming across at all. I didn't even think about that until I think it was Derek suggested it. Uh, it might've been Zelda. Either way, I had not even considered that. And I looked at it and I was like, I guess. I'm not getting that though. Additionally, my little note in, in regard to the body slams, why was most of the video Susan just getting her shit rocked? Like, Susan, baby, are you okay? You want us to call somebody? What's going on? Like, based on the abuse going on in the last two videos here, Titanic and Susan, do, do y'all need some help? Should we fly somebody out to your individual locales and, and figure out a way to, to airlift you out of there? <laughs> I guess I just don't know what the point was there. And um, it was very clear from the commentary from the judges that neither did Susan. And Susan made it very clear that she didn't know and that she didn't like this challenge and she didn't know how to approach this challenge. She wanted Donatella, which was the song that Callie Coquette received, which she did post on her YouTube video and you should go check that out. It was a very cool video. It was the production quality that I was expecting. I loved it. Um, I do wish that we had gotten to see this main quest sooner so that we could have seen Callie's version and then seen her spiral out of control. But with that, that's all 11 of the music videos. We are going to move on to the art pop runway. Each of the performers was tasked with creating a look that was based on one of Lady Gaga's art pop era looks. I don't know if that specifically meant the tours or the music videos, I don't know. Again, I don't know Lady Gaga or art pop very well. So, I'm going off of what I've got here. So Trisha Can, this is a badass look for her. Trisha Can did not come to fuck around here. She was in the top for a reason. This lip color and this silhouette was giving RuPaul. 
I was looking at Trisha and I thought she was cosplaying as RuPaul, to be quite honest. Next up, Rosa Gold. Okay, so I'm a bitch who loves wings. I love capes, I love hoods, I love wings. If you want to please me, you include those. Rosa's wings were, um, I don't know why they were that shape. Um, it just felt like they got crumpled a little bit. It felt like they had been in a suitcase, which is weird since they did this in their house. They meaning all the contestants. I thought that the wings needed to be a little more pristine since they were obviously meant to be the focal point of the piece because without the wings, it was a gold bodysuit with a really cool central gem. It was giving crystal gems, loved that. Bobby's look was also giving crystal gems, so I was very on board. But like, I just think that Rosa needed to pay a little more attention to everything besides the wings. I don't think that the wings saved the rest of it quite as much as we needed them to. That said, still a good look. Susan's voiceovers are always top tier. I love her commentary on absolutely anything. Letter to the editors. Give Susan some more confessionals. I want her to have some, some more narration moments because she's a vibe and I'm loving it. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I'm loving it. Now that said, Susan's runway was good. It was good. Um, however, I will say, sorry in advance, Susan. I love the idea and the look was mostly great, but I feel like it was just, it was three quarters of the way there as opposed to being a whole completed ensemble. It looked like it needed a little more polish, uh, a little more, it's just the shape for some reason didn't seem like it was doing much for me. Uh, but that said, when compared to the original that she was basing it on, it was a very cool shape. I just feel like it was it was at the second stage of its evolution. It was Charmeleon and we wanted to get to Charizard and we weren't quite there. All right, Tyler Knoll. Tyler Knoll, baby, I love you. This ain't it. This ain't it. You know, I know, we know, perfect, we're done. We don't have to talk about it anymore. The video was fantastic. Please elevate everything to that level. Turn the fuck up. Christy DeVinke, she is gorgeous. This is a very cool look. I'm gonna give her similar notes that I gave Rosa and Susan. This was such a cool idea and it was a great blend of what was a very simple premise that was expanded and elevated to Christy DeVinke. However, I do think that it could have been taken even further. I know that's the most boring open-ended note, but here's what I mean. I feel like the shape of the look, it looked like you finished the base and the base was solid. The base was great and the base is good by itself, but I feel like you could have done some more, especially when you have something as iconic as that mask. I think you could have used it as shoulder blades or like shoulder pads. You could have used it as like almost like like um, layered plate armor. You could have done something like that just to kind of make the shape a little more dynamic. I think when you are using something that dynamic and simplistic and you wanna keep it simplistic, sure, but you've gotta make sure you keep it that dynamic as well. Other than that, I have very few complaints about this look and I definitely still think that the top place and the win were very justified. Well done. Glass Stain. Glass Stain had a bit of a rough time this week. Her video was pretty good. Uh, this runway. I agreed with what the judges said. She basically took a look that was already glass stain and then found a way to make it less glass stain. It really fa felt like she took a look, like lowered it a little bit, which is disappointing. I agree with Zelda. I loved that touch with the red uh, fading into the black instead of the white. I thought that was great. Glass stain's colors that I associate her with are red and black. She's very thorn from Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost from the Hex Girls very Thorn, then that is Glass Stain. Thorn with a beard, love that. Um, I do think that this was a little bit more of a disappointing look. But that said, if I saw this look in person, if I saw it in the club, if I saw her at a party, I would be living for this look. I would be like, ooh, it flows so pretty, it's so great, it looks great in person. I'm sure I would like it in person. I'm not feeling it on the screen. But I said the same thing about Christy DeVinci's denim look which I'm sure is beautiful and constructed very well, but it didn't read as denim, so it just looked like a blue dress to me. So, you know, what do I know? I'm a clown in a wig and a corset sitting in my parents' basement. Take everything I say with a grain of salt, don't let it get to you. Titanic Donovan, loved this look, loved this interpretation. I think it was well executed, and uh, she very clearly understood the assignment here. This was a very nice way to um, make it hers. I know those are a lot of just like buzzwords that I said, but a lot of the time cliches are cliche for a reason because so many people feel them and it's the first thing that pops into their head. She needs a woman. Okay, so I'm on board with this look. 
I do think it was nearly there, but she ran into the sim same similar issue that Glass Dane had, which was um, she took a look that was already a little basic and somehow made, like took away the things that were most interesting about it. She stayed true to the heart of it and there was still a lot of good stuff there. And this was a nice middle way between like some of the more simplistic looks and the ones that were like elevated. I think this was a nice midway, but I think it was it was close to being this, so I don't know what kept her from going that far. Bobby Uranus, love this fucking look. It's not art pop. <laughs> That's the only note. Um, and I, again, I admittedly don't know art pop. If you hadn't told me that this wasn't art pop, I wouldn't fucking know. I don't know Lady Gaga very much, and I love this look. So frankly, uh, that first note bears no weight. I don't care that it's not art pop, it is Lady Gaga, and I love this look. I have no problem with it. I understand that the judges were a little, you know, whatever. Um, I loved this look. I have no qualms. I'm not mad. Next up we got Orbit. So for Orbit, I have a lot of the same notes. It is gorgeous. It's a little too simple. But in Orbit's defense, and in defense of a lot of the performers that chose simpler looks, when you have simpler source material to work with, it can be a little difficult to find a way to elevate it. It gets a little tricky, but you do have to find a way to do a drag version of that look, or to pick a different look. <laughs> Again, it's not a bad look, not bottom worthy or anything like that. Uh, I just, I know that she's capable of pushing it a little further. And the only reason I hold fast to that look is because of Hydra's look. Holy fucking shit, Hydra's look. Oh. I love this fucking look so much. I love this fucking look so goddamn much. It's creative, it's original, it's unique, it's clever, it's well-constructed, and it is so dynamic. I immediately knew what it was, and I don't know anything, but I immediately knew what this was. I remembered seeing this poster like in passing, and she forced me to remember it. That is a talent. Well done, Hydra. I see I chose my simps correctly. Hydra had the perfect example of a curated simplicity. Something that was simple in total. This is something that like Simone did really well on season 13. Something that is simple in concept, but you look at it and you think, oh yes, that is a complete concept idea come to fruition and perfectly executed. And now, after all of that, we move on to the placements for Drag Duel's very first ball episode. So first up in the safe category, we have Rosa Gold, Hydra, Orbit, and Titanic Donovan. Not mad about that. Next up in the top, we had by boy, by baby boy, Bobby Boopy, Bobby Baby Bobby Uranus. We got Christy Davinky, hell yes, the work of art herself. We got Trisha Ken, and she certainly can. And we got Tyler Knoll, whose video was fucking immaculate. I could, if, there were, if that runway was even slightly more elevated, this would have been Tyler's week. Holy shit. Tyler, we're expecting big things from you in the future. But with that said, the winner of this week's main quest is Christy Davinky. Well done, well done, bitch. Well fucking done and well earned. Excellent showing from Christy Davinky all around. Congrats to all of the tops. I'm very proud of them. And I am also very proud of those who find themselves in the bottom, who are Glass Stain, Shanitza Woman, and Susan. Now, we find out pretty quickly that Susan is safe, which means the drag duel to the death, the second one, and therefore the second elimination, will take place between Shanitza Woman and Glass Stain. But, but there is more. The judges announced that Glass Stain actually has an announcement to make, and this is when we find out that Glass Stain has elected to leave the competition voluntarily, therefore removing the need for her and Shanitza Woman to have a lip sync drag duel to the death, and instead taking the fall herself. Mad respect, Glass Stain. You will be missed. You will be missed. And we look forward to seeing all of the incredible things that you are going to do going forward. Who knows? Maybe you'll even be back on Drag Duel season two. I would love to see that comeback story. And plus I wanna see the return of Chubbs. Get Chubbs back in there, baby. My Miss Congeniality, Chubbs. So with that, Glass Stain is the second eliminated performer 
from Drag Duel Season 1, and she needs a woman lives to duel another day. Now, everybody go and follow Glass Dane, follow all the performers, but especially follow Glass Dane, because this took a lot of nads to do. It is not easy, so well done to her, and go give her as much love, send, all, send her all the tips to her Venmo and Cash App, etc. Get that shit poppin'. And then, since nobody has to fight to the death this episode, Hunger Games style, Everybody just has a wonderful ensemble performance of Rain On Me by Lady Gaga instead. And I loved this. This was a great way to close things out. And I gotta say, after only six episodes of Drag Duel, we've already had a self-elimination. We've had a controversial elimination. We have had drama and alliances and unique situations and unique performers and dynamic performances. Anybody who is not watching Drag Duel right now, what the fuck are you doing? Get on it. Go to Drag Duel's YouTube channel, their Instagram, their TikTok, follow them everywhere and start watching. And also make sure you go and give Glass Dane plenty of love and go watch Kelly Coquette's video of her performance of Donatella from the Art Pop album as well. It was really great, I was loving it. Uh, a bit of a flash warning to anybody who is uh, sensitive to strobe lights, there were a lot of them in hers, like <laughs> a lot. So do just be careful about that. Otherwise, what a fantastic fucking episode. I am losing my shit because that was a goddamn blast and I just can't wait to see what happens in the first half of round four of Drag Duel, episode seven coming up on Monday at 3 p.m. So everybody tune in and uh, tune into my show, High Noon, as well if you want a wonderful recap show of everything Drag Duel. If you haven't already, please like the video, share it, subscribe, comment, be nice though, because I will block at the drop of a hat even if I misinterpret something just because I've gone mad with power and nobody's stopped me. <laughs> and hit that nifty little notification bell so that you always get notifications every time I post some brand new cotton candy scented, clowny cross-dressing cartoon content from your favorite 12 in 1 clown. You'll meet the other nine characters later. Thank you all again for watching. My name is Daisy Mays and I am wishing you all some very happy days. Mwah! Rain on me, 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 rain on me, me, me. I don't know the words, I don't know the words. Ow!